Welcome back to another episode of Introductory Organic Chemistry. We have another special episode today where we rank the smells of forbidden chemicals. Now the rules for today's lecture are that all of the chemicals have to be common ones that almost anyone working in a lab will have used or at least seen many times. If we have a better smelling chemical, it's going to get a higher rank. And if it's a more toxic chemical, it's also going to rank higher. So if we have something like ethyl acetate, ethyl acetate is not that toxic, but it does smell pretty good. But this would never be like an S or an A tier chemical because it's just not that toxic. So let's get to the list. So here we have a whole bank of different chemicals with a bunch of different properties. Some of them are protecting groups like this TBS chloride. Some of them are solvents like diethyl ether. So maybe let's start with a nice neutral one like acetone. So acetone is a solvent we use all the time. If you breathe it in on its own, it's like quite potent, but it has like a character to it. It's pretty nice. The body makes acetone itself, so it's not too, too toxic. So I don't think we could really give it like an A or a B tier. I think it's probably a C or a D. Like it's a pretty good smell, but it's not that good of a smell and it's not that toxic. So maybe let's just put acetone in D and then we'll see how we go with the rest of them. If we look at another one like methyl ethyl ketone, so methyl ethyl ketone has a nicer smell, but it's also like, ooh, you should not be smelling that. It's got that kick to it where it's like, ooh, yikes, you probably shouldn't be smelling this. And it's like, ooh, but it's like a forbidden pleasure. If you've worked with brake cleaner at all or some other like uh, cleaning fluids for cars, you'll probably have smelled methyl ethyl ketone before. I would say we have to give methyl ethyl ketone at least a C. Maybe I'll change it to a B later if I change my mind. If you disagree with me, you can let me know in the comments. So let's look at another one like diethyl ether. So I really like diethyl ether. It's got a nice minty smell to it. We use it all the time. So when someone's using ether, you can usually smell it. We actually had this lady who is a technician in our, not in our lab, but at our university, who could always swear that she could smell diethyl ether, no matter where it was in the building. She could always smell diethyl ether, even if we weren't working with it. And she'd come to our lab and ask. So it's a strong smelling compound, low boiling point. It's not that toxic, but it could be used as a sedative. So I think it's fair to give diethyl ether a B. If we look at another one like uh, methyl terbutyl ether, this one also has quite a good smell. I'd say it's actually slightly better than diethyl ether. It's still a solvent, so you probably shouldn't uh, be breathing it in. Now, it's less unstable than diethyl ether, and so you know it's a little bit more reasonable to use than diethyl ether. Because diethyl ether can form peroxides, it should probably get a slightly higher rating, but it's still not that toxic. So I think methyl terbutyl ether should also go in B, but I might change my mind to an A tier later. Now, if we look at another one like cyclohexane, cyclohexane's got to probably be an A because this is like the smell of whiteout. If people are smelling liquid paper, it's usually the cyclohexane in there. And so, you know, it's forbidden. No one looks at someone smelling whiteout and thinks that that person's responsible. So there's a bit of stigma associated with cyclohexane. It's definitely got to be an A tier. I'm not going to lie. Now, thiophosgene. Thiophosgene has a good smell. I believe it's S tier because everyone I talk to is terrified of working with it. I've worked with it a ton. I've had undergrads work with it. It's fine, but it is toxic. It's like phosgene. It's a fairly toxic reagent, but it's okay to work with. It's got a good smell. So I mean, like this has got to be an S, maybe an A tier. We'll see. Then we have some other ones like TBS chloride. So TBS chloride you look at it and you know that that's toxic. It's got a, it's got an SICL bond. It's going to be making hydrochloric acid, but it smells so damn good. It's got this like winter minty refreshing smell that terpetal compounds tend to have in general, but it's also like you probably shouldn't be smelling uh, sile chloride. So I'm feeling like this has probably got to be A tier. Now we don't have any E or F tiers yet, so maybe let's go lower down on the page. So let's maybe do dimethyl ether. So dimethyl ether is used in hairspray. And so the smell of hairspray, other than the perfumes that they add, is typically due to dimethyl ether because it's so volatile. Now, we don't ever work with this one in the lab because it's too volatile and you'd have to work with it in its condensed form, which is would only be possible at low temperatures. But, you know, I associate the smell of dimethyl ether with growing up because I had two sisters, so they both use hairspray a lot. Now, it's not that toxic because it goes in a consumer product, but it does smell pretty good. So maybe... I'll put this in D tier. So let's look at what we have left. Ethyl acetate is a nice smelling compound, but it's like super non-toxic. It's present in fermentation, but it is better smelling than acetone. So I think I'm actually gonna change acetone to an E tier and we'll put ethyl acetate in D tier right next to dimethyl ether. 
Indole is a good smelling compound, but it depends on the context. So indole is often added to perfumes. However, it's also somewhat the smell of like feces, uh, not quite to the same extent as scatol, which just smells like old people poop. But uh, indole on its own smells like not terrible, kind of like naphthalene, but then you get a little bit too strong. It's like, ooh, that's not nice. And so sometimes indole and related compounds are the smell of bad breath, but they're also used as like an attractant when present with other things. So it doesn't have a great smell and it's not that toxic, but it's still kind of pleasant in its own special way. I'll, I'm going to put it in F tier. Maybe it belongs in E tier. You can let me know what you think if you like indole. Now, benzoquinone. Benzoquinone is a nice yellow solid. I had a picture of benzoquinone in my last lecture. It uh, kind of smells like popcorn, but it like kind of attacks your sinuses and makes you sneeze a little bit. So it's not like an amazing smell, but it's like kind of pleasant. And then you go in for a stronger smell. It's like, ooh, don't, don't do that. Shouldn't be smelling this. This is kind of toxic. Probably not a good thing to breathe in. That's an oxidant. We need antioxidants, not oxidants. So I'm going to put it up around C tier. It isn't as good smelling as methyl ethyl ketone. Um, and it's also slightly, probably slightly more toxic. So that's about a fair trade off, I'd say. Now, if we look at phenol, some people really dislike the smell of phenol, but I've kind of grown to like it quite a lot. Like it smells nice. I've made uh, like acetate derivatives of phenol. It's just like a nice smelling compound, but it's also used to like kill the nail bed of your finger or toenails. So like if you need to ever get the sides of your nails reduced, like if you're getting hangnails all the time, they do that with phenol. And it says it's quite toxic for skin. And so, I mean, I think this has to be at least an A or a B tier. I'm going to put it in B tier because while it's more toxic than diethyl ether or tert-butyl methyl ether, it's less good smelling than, than the two ethers. Now let's look at the remaining ones. Uh, cyclopentadiene. So cyclopentadiene, it's a really nice smelling compound, but you immediately know you should not be smelling it. It smells good, but super toxic. So I think cyclopentadiene has to go S tier. It also does diels alder reactions, which means it reacts with, uh, you know, good electron acceptors, such as like Michael acceptors. So, you know, it's probably doing stuff in your body that's not good. Like if you took cyclopentadiene and benzoquinone, they definitely react very easily. So this is probably a good S tier one, probably pretty toxic, probably shouldn't be breathing it in. Now I've been saving cyclohexene for a while. Cyclohexene, it has like the same kind of smell as cyclohexane, but way more of a gasoline vibe. And you know you're playing with fire smelling it. It's like a nice little whiff. It's like, oh, it's kind of like gas. It's like, that is overwhelming. The whole lab smells like it. So I think this probably has to go A tier as well. It's less good smelling than cyclohexane. And if you're smelling cyclohexene, people wouldn't know what you're smelling. But if you're smelling whiteout, you look like a total loser. So maybe, uh, maybe cyclohexane should go in S tier. Let me know what you think in the comments. We're down to the very last molecule. Bach anhydride. So Bach anhydride smells like an acyl halide, like an acyl chloride specifically, but it does not have a chloride. But it also still kind of has that nice uh, wintergreen smell that terpbutanol or other terpbutyl compounds have. But if you read the MSDS for this stuff, it's like super toxic. You should not be breathing in Bach anhydride at all. But it doesn't smell that bad. It smells like it's probably okay to breathe it a little bit. So I'm going to put this in S tier. Overall, I think this is a fairly decent distribution. If you have any other chemicals that you think should go in this tier list, uh, please comment down below. And if you have any chemicals that uh, you think should be included in the future episode, I'd like to hear about them. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments and uh, leave a like and subscribe. Have a great day.